Let's start right now uh, talking about private first class Bradley Manning, the man accused of being the source of a major dump of classified documents to the whistleblowing website WikiLeaks. He's been recommended to move forward to face the most serious trial in the military out there, a general court martial. His pretrial hearing is wrapping up, and investigating officer Colonel Paul Almanza says all 22 charges against Private Manning have also been recommended to be part of that trial. Now, this is not really surprising news. The odds have been stacked against Private Manning's defense team from day one. This includes just two of the near 50 defense witnesses being allowed by the military. And by the way, the prosecution was allowed a week, a full week of witnesses brought to the court. The defense team's witnesses testified for one single morning before the hearing ended. Now, the court martial, when given the green light, will take place in the next three to four months. But let's not forget, Bradley Manning has already spent more than a year and a half in custody, and much of that in solitary confinement in some pretty harsh conditions that hundreds of people and groups, including, by the way, the United Nations, have characterized as torturous. Now, if found guilty of the crimes with which he is charged, Private Manning stands to spend the rest of his life in prison. So, again, nothing too surprising. And I should mention, too, Bradley Manning has plenty of support in this country. I've been to countless protests and rallies where there are hundreds of people who come out to support him. I also got something new to show you, a billboard put up pretty recently right here in Washington, D.C. This was put up on New York Avenue uh, near downtown here, free Bradley Manning. This was, um, you know, from a lot of people who really think that Bradley Manning has been treated poorly and has been wronged and uh, needs a little support. They're trying to bring awareness to his case. So uh, there is plenty to talk about, and I have here in studio with me Zach Pezzavento, press liaison to the Bradley Manning Support Network. And uh, Zach, we have a lot to talk about. Um, uh, first of all, I, I, at the very beginning of this show, we showed a clip of this video that I'm sure you've seen. It's gone viral. This shows U.S. Marines in uniform urinating on uh, dead militants. So uh, a simple question for you to start off. What is more harmful to the American national interest? Bradley Manning's leaks, alleged leaks of these documents, or the leaks by soldiers on Afghan corpses? Well, I have to say, you know, the video is certainly uh, uh, concerning and something that, uh, you know, uh, makes me feel, um, uh, uh, wants me to take a step back as an American and, and say, you know, what is really going on here with this war? Um, I think when we take a step back and look at it, we can say, um, you know, this is unfortunately part and parcel of uh, the day-to-day -day realities of war and combat overseas. Um, when we look at what Bradley Manning is alleged to have revealed, uh, the day-to-day, -day, um, you know, cover-ups of atrocities and crimes and, um, you know, it's oftentimes many, you know, of those things that we don't see, um, that don't get caught on camera, um, that he was able to bring to light. And we're, we're showing the, that video again right here. Um, I think it's an important point. I, th I think um, it, for, uh, in a lot of ways, it was unfortunate that this was caught on video. Uh, I, I think this pro stuff kind of happens probably way more than uh, the mainstream media would, uh, would like anyone to believe. It, it is. It's a stain on um, the reputation of the U.S. It, it's very sad. But you're right. Private First Class Bradley Manning revealed things that were going on, and for that, he is facing a, a serious punishment. I, I mean, let's talk, though, about the specific factors in this trial. I, I saw you nodding your head when I was sort of laying out some of the factors uh, that the defense team has faced. Uh, it seems to me, Zach, that for those who serve this country, at least in this case, innocent until proven guilty, doesn't seem to be at play here. I mean, for people familiar with this case, and there are a lot of people familiar with this case around the entire world, what does this story tell? The story of the defense team being denied uh, almost anything here. Well, I, I think it's pretty clear that from day one, the Obama administration never intended to give Bradley Manning a fair shot here. Um, and as you said before, we've seen uh, when it comes to, no matter what issue it is, whether it's the witnesses that are being allowed, the evidence, um, at every step of the way, the, uh, the military has stacked the deck against Bradley Manning. And we see again here today, or yesterday, with this uh, uh, set of charges, they want to go full force with this. They want to make an example out of Bradley. Um, this isn't about giving him a fair trial. This is really more about um, how this is going to play out in the public eye and what sort of a, a message they want to send to 
other people who might want to blow the whistle on crimes or other illegal behavior. Yeah, it seems that no matter what the investigation actually finds, that this punishment is going to be a severe one. And I think it's important, uh, I'm not going to list all 22 charges here, but, but an important one to mention is aiding the enemy. Now, now, with the charge of aiding the enemy comes a punishment of the death penalty. The government has said it, it will not be seeking the death penalty in this case, but it is a very, very serious charge. Um, and it will be interesting to see how, um, you know, what sort of evidence is brought forth that he was actually aiding the enemy if he is the one indeed uh, behind this leak. I want to talk about um, the role of the media in this, too. This has been going on uh, for a very, very long time, this case. And let me just play really quick a soundbite from Bill O'Reilly. This is host of The O'Reilly Factor on America's number one cable news network, um, Fox News, of course. Whoever leaked all those State Department documents to the WikiLeaks website is a traitor and should be executed or put in prison for life. As you may know, classified information is now floating around the globe, courtesy of the traitors and this despicable website, which is based in Sweden. All right, Zach, now this is, of course, an opinion show, The O'Reilly Factor, but I, I always thought the job of the media was, was to expose government corruption. Instead, here's a news host not only deciding who is and who is not a traitor, um, but that he thinks that this 20-something-year-old young man should be put to death. Talk about the role of the media as you've seen it sort of play out in the case of Riley Manning. Well, you know, it, it calls to mind uh, President Kennedy's statement that the very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And I think that that is uh, something that really motivates a lot of us, a lot of us who want to see a free press that is able to hold uh, our elected officials accountable. At the end of the day, uh, you know, we believe in a constitution that starts with the three words, we the people. Uh, the government is supposed to work for us. And if they're going to routinely conceal um, every day, you know, um, things that do not harm national security or um, if they're going to, you know, conceal crimes or conceal things uh, just to avoid embarrassment, then that's not what they're called to do. And so if our elected officials um, aren't able to live up to that standard, then they're just frankly not qualified to govern. There are a lot of um, aspects that we can talk about regarding this Bradley Manning case, but I think it's also important sometimes to sort of take this out and, and make it a little bigger. I know that uh, every year the United States comes out with a report. It focuses on human rights abuses around the world, pointing its finger at a number of countries, including, for example, Iran and China. Um, but what about the treatment of Bradley Manning? I mean, I think this tells a larger story. I interviewed the UN Special Rapporteur. Um, you know, to, to the United Nations, and he has been outraged and frustrated. He hasn't even been able to meet with Bradley Manning one-on-one. -on -one. Um, talk about this. I mean, the solitary well, confinement, there's so much to talk about. Well, it's absurd, and I, and I had a chance uh, recently to speak with uh, Mr. Mendez as well, and, and he, uh, he mentioned the absurdity of the situation. His normal mandate is to be able to speak candidly with the prisoner anywhere in the world um, so that he can have that really private discussion about what went on. And the military said, you're more than welcome to have that discussion, but we're going to have it on videotape. Uh, so there's no way for them to really speak uh, candidly. There have been uh, situations where meetings with, between Manning and his defense team uh, have been recorded. And even, unfortunately, and, and, and this is really strange, but the, uh, some of the abuse that you mentioned, uh, the forced nudity, that has also been uh, recorded on videotape by the military. And uh, they refuse to turn this evidence over uh, to the defense team uh, that would clearly show that Manning's Eighth Amendment rights uh, to be free of um, cruel and unusual punishment, that's clearly been violated, as have many other rights here. And, you know, back to the, the issue of, um, you know, staying true to the Constitution, I think that the real question here is, is President Obama uh, staying true to his oath to defend the Constitution, to stand up for the rights of Bradley Manning? and by extension, all Americans. Uh, it's, a, it's an important question, and we will keep our eyes on this case, despite the fact that it already seems very skewed, and it hasn't even really started. Press liaison for the Bradley Manning Support Network, Zach Pezzavento. Thanks so much Thank for, for being here today.